Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on PTEC Chemistry. So, uh, this is Mr. On. Uh, today, I am just going to use materials from a good friend of mine, Mr. Maxim Yap uh, from PTE and Kurong. So, he has uh, provided me a couple of videos uh, on uh, on uh, practical chemistry where, where he videos some students uh, doing some experiments. So it wouldn't be a complete list, uh, but I'll just walk through what I think are relevant uh, in the context of uh, not just A-level students, but all level students as well. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. So this is actually a Cambridge All-Level Chemistry 5070 syllabus. So what we see here really is this is for the June, sorry, this is for the June and November 2020 and 2021 syllabus. So this applies for the people who are going to take the exam in, in this particular session. So I had a look at the syllabus and I thought, um, what kind of practicals can come out? So if you scroll all the way down to, um, to the relevant practical techniques that they want you to know, so, so there's on page 28, I think, yeah, okay. So practical assessment, so they say that uh, students either do practical tests or alternative to practical. Ideally, you should have done the actual experiments, practical tests, so that you know what's going on. Questions in the practical paper, they even tell you what kind of thing can come out. So it can be a volumetric analysis, so there's titration. So different kind of titrations, either acid base or a redox titration, something to do with an oxidizing agent or reducing agent. So they say that you should know, you see it's a knowledge uh, that you need indicator and other indicator might be required. An experiment involving determination of some quantity. You see, they actually told you that temperature change. So that's to do with uh, using a thermometer to measure the temperature change when, when a reaction releases heat, meaning it's exothermic reaction, or when a reaction absorb heat which you are not very used to, but some reactions, well, in fact, reactions can be exothermic or endothermic, right? So they can absorb heat and your solution can see a, a, a drop in temperature. It gets colder, okay? All the rate of reaction, so there's to do with time. So you're measuring a quantity of something which can be mass, which can be volume, which can be, I don't know, you can think about the rest, all right? Over time, so you need, you need you need time you need access to a stopwatch a stop clock okay um, they will depend on the use of usual laboratory apparatus so you need to be accustomed uh, or at least your teacher should make you accustomed uh, get used to all those uh, usual laboratory apparatus all right an observ observational problem so this is to do with observations this is to do with qualitative analysis they even say can include may include simple chromatography. So you may not be used to this by just looking at past paper questions, but when it comes up, you cannot say they never told you, yeah? So you should have some idea of what is meant by chromatography. They can actually ask you to work out RF value. I mean, why not, right? It's all part of the theory as it comes from practical experience, okay? Test for oxidizing and reducing agents. So this is not necessarily um, titration thing so you should know your common oxidizing agent and your common reducing agent so like from looking at the syllabus i saw that they already removed the potassium dichromate 6 from the list of oxidizing agent so it seems like your only uh, option in all level at the moment based on the table provided uh, and based on what you might have covered in theory really so it's just acidified kmno4 but you should you might have heard the acidified potassium dichromate 6 sort of like K2, Cr2, or 7 There's also a very good oxidizing agent as well, yeah? A common reducing agent includes uh, stuff like uh, potassium iodide. Potassium iodide is a quite a powerful reducing agent. And uh, I forgot the other one. Uh, so chlorine is quite a good oxidizing agent as well. So, so you should be aware of that from your group 17 chemistry. Sorry, group 7 chemistry, okay? The other thing is filtration. So they can ask you to filter something. The fact that you can filter something the conclusion you can draw on is that you must have produced a solid and you have a solution and you want to separate the solid from the solution so that's why you do filtration so why are you doing this why are you using this technique so those are the things that could be asked all right um so all these are basically in the qa notes 
but be aware that you should be uh, familiarized with all the um, uh, observations because any of it can come out in theory and it will be problematic, it will be disadvantageous, it will be not beneficial for you if you don't know your, your results of qualitative analysis, which it makes you work faster in a practical if you know what's going on, you know, from experience. It's not every single time you keep on referring to the table, yeah? Okay, you may require to carry simple calculations. This typically involves rate of reaction. Oh, sorry, uh, number of moles, stoichiometric quantities, okay? What is limiting, what is excess? But it could also involve uh, things like working out rate of reaction from time. So you know shorter time means faster rate. And why is that? Because you take the reciprocal, meaning one over the time taken for the reaction to happen. Okay, that's proportional to rate. Um, well, you, you don't have your note, your textbook or whatever information other than the QA notes, which you should be familiarized with, all right? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So we're not going to go to alternative to practical. Practical technique. So they did say what is required. Your burette reading should be to the nearest 0.1 cm cube. So this is slightly different from air level standard where it's uh, nearest 0 0.05 cm cube. So this is an all level. This is an all level syllabus. In air level, you'll be required to 0 0.05 cm cube. All right, that's the accuracy of burette. Uh, I need to say that because I think this video, I did say it, it's generalized to all level and air level stuff, but not this one, yeah, okay. Um, this one generalized, uh, generalizable, okay. You need to have done in enough number of titrations. You have a good endpoint and a good titus. And again, this is just for all level. I think in A level, you, you, need, you need a closer uh, tighter, yeah? Being a better chemist by that time. Temperature is general, so it has to be 0.5 degrees Celsius. All right, so you, you, you cannot record 12.1 degrees Celsius on your thermometer because your thermometer doesn't record that at all, yeah? Times to the nearest seconds, okay? So based on your stopwatch, you convert it to the nearest second. Uh, you should roughly know in QA what is meant by 1 to 2 cm cube, all right? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Con deductions or conclusion can only be gained if you have appropriate observations. So observation is not a conclusion. It's everything you see, you smell, whatever. Color change is not the final color change only. Is it a solution? Is it a solid? Okay. Is it a gas? By the way, if it is a colorless gas, you do not see a colorless gas. So please don't say you see a colorless gas. All right. Could you smell the gas? Is it odorless? All right. And then if you think there is a gas, if you think there is a gas and it's colorless, how are you going to prove it? You need to do tests for gases. That's why you are given the test for gases table in QA. Yeah? All right. The most important bit, they give you that the minimum stuff that you need. Um, in, in all level practical, yeah? You need a bureau and a pipette, so that's typical for titration, pipette filler as well, conical flask, all right? You should know about the quantity of this because um, uh, quantities are important as well. So it's important to appreciate what is 50 cm cube burette and what is 25 cm cube pipette, yeah? Um, why do you have a filter funnel there? Well, you could use the filter funnel to fill in the burette Okay, because you do not want to pour directly from a container into the burette, you might spill it, okay? Um, and you might also need a filter funnel to do filtration. Remember previously above, they did say that uh, you might need to do filtration. Where was it? Uh, uh, I saw filtration just now. Mm, there was, well, there was filtration when I saw it just now. Um, Oh, there you go. Simple titration. No, uh, I forgot what I saw already, but it was it was there earlier somewhere. Okay, I might, I covered it earlier. Anyway, going back to the list, um, need a thermometer, a polystyrene cup. So those are typically for for measuring temperature changes. And you should know polystyrene is that styrofoam. It's also known as styrofoam cup. They are um, a poor conductor of heat, so they prevent heat loss. So there's one, one of the uh, main reason of using them. They prevent heat loss, but does not mean that they 100% preserve the heat, right? So there's always bound to be some thermal energy loss. So that can contribute to a little bit of your um, experimental errors, okay? You need a stopwatch uh, clock for a rate of reaction. You need a wash bottle because it will be filled with distilled water. Remember, after you wash your conical flask, because you only have two conical flasks, 
So once you do one rough titration and one exact titration, then you run out of flask. Then you throw away whatever solution mixture that, that you have already. And then you wash it with water. And then you should rinse it with distilled water, okay? Because washing with tap water is different from uh, rinsing with uh, distilled water, okay? So you should know the difference between distilled and tap water. All right, um, you should have test tubes, boiling tubes, stirring rod. And you see this bit here, it means that it's new, I guess, uh, in comparison with the previous syllabus that they issue. So why do they have this? Now they said you should have a test tube holder. That's because it's safe. It's not safe to use your hand to hold the test tube when you hit it on the Bunsen burner. Yeah, you should know that already. But it also means that um, uh, you could have test tube or boiling tube. It also means that um, they could be looking at uh, experiments that involve thermal decomposition. Okay, things that require prolonged heating. Okay, not like hit for five seconds, not like that. You might need to hit this for like um, 20 seconds, one minute. They might ask you to record observations. So there are stuff that are called, um, there are things that are called uh, hydrated salt. So you might have heard of this. It's like CuSO4 dot, uh, it might be 6H2O, it might be 5H2O. So what would you see? What would you see when you hit this? Well, this is going to be a blue colored uh, solid. When you hit this, you are going to get CuSO4 plus 6H2O. So this is a solid. The, the original thing is a solid. Uh, this is a solid. Uh, sorry. So that is a solid. Okay. Uh, what happened then is when you have... Uh, where's my marker? Okay, when you hit it, you're gonna evolve this. So in your test tube, the H2O is gonna evolve and then it's gonna go up your test tube or your boiling tube. What you will see is you will see a liquid droplet. So you will not see the water because you, you don't even know it's water, you see. You're just hitting a, a blue solid. You will see liquid droplet. What color would it be? It will be colorless. Where, where is it? It will be at the upper part of the tube. Why is it at the upper part of the tube? Because it vaporizes, it goes into the, it's very hot, right? So it goes into the gaseous state, but as it travels up the, up the test tube or the boiling tube, it will condense back down, and that's why you see a little bit of liquid droplet forming at the top of the test tube, right? So these are the kind of observation that suggest to you that, you know, liquid droplet, colorless, you could test for water, I guess. Um, uh, and then you could test for the gas, it wouldn't support combustion, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, give off a pop sound with acid, uh, it would give off a pop sound with a, with a lighter splint, um, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't turn lime water milky or chalky, all right? So these are the kind of thing. Uh, what else could you have? You could also obviously have, I don't know, um, calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, um, magnesium carbonate, let's say. So there is a white solid. When you heat it strongly, you're gonna get another white solid as well, but you're gonna give off this gas. And this gas is um, CO2. So again, it's colorless, but this time you won't see a liquid droplet forming. So so you, you, you might need to test for this gas. They might ask you to test for it, or you might just need to be aware that when you heat something out, you should be aware of thermal decomposition reaction, which could be a carbonate decomposition, which is in your, well, all level and also in your air level syllabus as well, yeah? The other thing you could be thinking about, which is probably the most slightly one, is things like ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride is formed from ammonia and HCl, so it's a white solid. It's a giant ionic uh, solid. It has NH4 plus and Cl minus. So when you hit this, they are not going to remain very happy like that. They are going to give you NH3 gas and HCl gas. Why not hydrochloric acid? Because where is your water? Where does your water come from? There's no water. You started from a solid. It has no water in it. It is not hydrated. So your NH4 Cl there is a solid. When you heat it in a boiling tube, it will give off ammonia and HCl gas. The thing with these two gases is they will vaporize, right? So they go up your test tube. So when they cool down at the upper part of your test tube, what will you see? You might see some, you might see some uh, white solid uh, forms 
at the upper part of the tube. So if you are not aware of what I'm talking about, you should ask your chemistry teacher to demonstrate this to you. Ammonium chloride is available in most uh, schools in Brunei and everywhere else. So just put in a test tube and heat it and then observe what happened. Yeah? Okay, so uh, white solid will find the upper part of the tube. That is because as this and this vaporizes, as they condenses back up, uh, as, as it condenses at the upper part of the test tube or boiling tube, they can recombine and give you some ammonium chloride again at the upper part of the tube. But that is not always the case because the gas can escape, right? So you can test for gases, which you can test using, um, well, you have the red lemmas. Your red lemmas can turn blue is a result of the ammonia gas being alkaline. But you can also test blue litmus will turn red as a result of the acidic HCl gas. So it's quite counterintuitive here, right? So you got both acidic and also uh, uh, alkaline gas, which is unusual. Unlike the usual uh, qualitative analysis where you have a solution, you have a solution of NH4+, plus, uh, containing NH4+, plus, and then you add sodium hydroxide, and then what happens is you heat it, then it can give off NH3 gas, but you are also having water remaining in the solution. So that's the ionic equation there, and that is very um, counterintuitive, okay? Because you are so used to this being a solution, and then you are not used to and then you are not used to, to this being a, hitting a solid that can give you NH3 as well because you are so used to this. But again, these are all possible all levels as well as AS level uh, paper 3. In fact, any of these can also come out in theory papers and also in your paper 5, uh, in A, A level uh, paper 5 under planning section as well. So what I'm trying to say really is uh, you should be aware of what they can ask you to do as a result of uh, these uh, apparatus requirements that they specify in the syllabus. Okay, um, reagent list. So have a, having a look at the reagent list, what kind of things are weird? So these are all normal really. When you look at it, sodium hydroxide and ammonia, those are standard because it's part of the qualitative analysis to test for cations and anions. Um, you need the silver nitrate to test for the halide group 17. Okay, so you should know the color of silver chloride, silver bromide, and silver iodide, and their correct formula as well. So Ag plus X minus group seven ion. So that is in O level. In L level, you will have learned group 17 ion. Okay, so I guess don't get confused. Um, so what else? What else? Uh, potassium manganese seven is MnO4 minus K plus, so it's KMnO4. You see that you need the acid, so it's actually H plus KMnO4. Aluminium foil is there to test for, um, what is that ion? Um, the test for nitrate ion, okay? And then you can release ammonia when you heat it with sodium hydroxide. Um, you see, there's also universal indicator paper, so you will see uh, in this uh, letter in the video, there's um, a couple of pictures of universal indicator paper that um, uh, a friend of mine from PT Sunkurong has uh, kindly provided some pictures and videos of. All right, um, these are all common hazards of chemicals. So just because you do experiments does not mean that you shouldn't be aware of all the dangers and stuff. So acids are corrosive. Uh, certain stuff are toxic. Oxidizing agent obviously oxidizing. Alcohols are flammable. You know, etc. etc. Okay, so I'll go through some, I've gone through that syllabus now. So now I will show you some, some videos and pictures that, that, uh, that I gathered from my friend, okay? Uh, Mr. Maxim from PT Sankurong. Okay. Physics! <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just plain physics, man. Oy. Clever boys!
Tapi kerja pas ngam-ngam tunggu Ngam-ngam tunggu tunggu tunggu